Okay, this is the sharp one. So, uh, let me see. Next slide. Yeah. So, problems uh, statement. This support zone device register is a, a, a widely used API. We use it to register small zone devices in many, in many different drivers. And uh, when it's, it is first introduced, we have four parameters. And we add some, and add some, and remove some, and also add some. And whenever this happens, it's a pain. We need to update so many, uh, many colors of this API. And if we check the parameters of the current thermal zone device register, yeah, we can see that many of them, these are just optional. These are just optional, uh, and these are configuration data. This, it doesn't not necessarily apply to every, every uh, small, small zone device. And uh, but we already have a small zone parameter, uh, this structure, which already have some configuration data. So what I'm proposing here is that can we just, can we do a clean up once and move this this optional configuration uh, parameters into the some uh, to this some zone prime structure, and then we leave this API with fixed parameters. And for uh, uh, in the future, when we when we when we add new, uh, and new uh, parameters, we just need to update the some zone uh, uh, parameters uh, structure. We don't need to update those APIs anymore. Yes, this is uh, this is what I just uh, uh, just uh, see if the, this is uh, something that uh, we should do. And this is this is type of maintenance, right? Yes, I I, uh, I don't have any more slides. It's just this question. I I just see. If this uh, can be moved to this one, and if yes, and which should be removed so that we can make a, uh, we can maybe we can make a clean up for it. Okay, so I guess the the problem statement here is that we have too many uh, arguments for thermal zone device register, and they at least is growing right uh, over time, yeah. or yeah. otherwise changing, which is uh, which is not convenient. Uh, because because all the users have to be updated every time, right? So, so that will yeah, be right. Uh, and and because of that, so I I think that one one way to address this would be to have a single pointer pass to thermal zone device register, and that pointer will point to a parameter structure where there is all all, all information needed and uh, and it, it can be extensible right so we could yeah. add more more pieces to it as needed without necessarily updating all of the users of it because uh which may not care about the new pieces so yeah. the question daniel what do you think is 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 is, is yeah. this a good idea or is it not? Yes, I think it, it makes sense. Makes sense. That's 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 why there is more and more parameters. To right. Function. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess we 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 can we can start working on it, right? Yeah. Right. And then, what about uh, for this uh, for this one? So uh, better we have uh, the, uh, a list of the new. Uh, parameters uh, in the API. So, for example, the type and the DB data, and also this uh, is the key pointer. This is something we must uh, keep in the new API. And then what about this one? The operation callbacks. Can we leave it with the, uh, with, should we leave it with the new uh, one API, or can we move it into the uh, small zone parameter structure? Um, so I, I, I personally think that the, there should be only one argument and, 
and that the, the, the structure pointed to by it should contain all of the information. Okay, just the one single parameter. Yeah. Okay, I got it. That makes sense. I think that overall, in many cases, we are adding and then like uh, if we have several gravels need to update at the same time and uh, it's pain every time. Yeah. And if you have a structure, you can even maybe save the time of all this you know, seeding everything and you know use that structure in some in list as is. Assume that user has the may put a requirement that user at the locket real memory and gave you. I don't know. It depends because then you know it it will need to be allocated. Uh, and uh, um, and and the, the caller would need to stick to it after after uh, you know after after having registered the device. But yeah, why not? Yeah, I'm just I'm not yeah I'm not particular about it. But yeah, that, right. that helps. <laughs> for for the systems where you want fast boot in the you know boot up because if you have like thirty sensors or forty sensors, they take time. <laughs> Well, yeah, so especially if you have like a static definition, right? Uh, anyway, where all the stuff is already populated. And, yeah. Um, okay. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this was easy. Thank you. Uh, this was easy. Thanks for bringing this up, Rui, again. Uh, Giovanni, can you please uh, 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 can you please change? Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Right, so that would be, I think, all of the uh, all about the second topic, right? Or is there anything else to add? This is all about the second topic. Oh, oh, oh all about it. All right. So now we need to switch over to the re real. Um, next topic that we have here and that will be uh wait for 10 minutes we can talk about the frequency invariance during the time uh, i have a question just about this change all right okay right right now i'm doing a re rework of the three points uh you might see that you might have seen that there is a, a big huge patch set yeah 30, 30 patches so that means that this will we work. Uh, we do that before or after. I, I think it doesn't matter this point because we will need to change. Well, so if we do, if we switch over to the single, you know, if we train, yeah, to a single ar argument, uh, you will not change, not need to change the users of the API anymore, right? Uh, right. At least the majority of them. So maybe it's better to to make this change first and then do the three points rework on top of it because it, it may be cleaner this way just now so for the majority of cases you will be changing you'll be making one change instead of two i think yeah but i i will need to look at the you know at okay. your patch set and see because uh, it all depends on what, what must work, right? Like if, if if we can reduce the amount of work by doing things in a certain order, then let's do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. That would be my approach. All right. So the frequency invariance. Uh, I the, the the real problem there is that we use the a perf and m perf counters for computing the uh, the, the current frequency of uh of a cpu on x86 or at least on intel and that uh ratio can get can be greater than one now the expectation of the scheduler or at least the pelt code is that the the, the the value is less than max right so and that's that's that that is why we have to guess the real the, the 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 max freak yeah yes there this is the the, the reason uh, 
because it may be made up. As I said, so you you have you have several different turbo bins. Like you 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 have a single core turbo, you have four core turbo, you have eight core turbo, you have like several flavors. Which one you choose? So we also we change dynamically the power total power of the high rate. I'm saying pick the absolute max frequency you could ever reach on any of the CPUs, assuming... Huh? May I speak? You can. One second, let me finish. So you can, but the problem is you're going to end up with a resolution of your real utilization being between 0 to 10 if you pick 100 gigahertz, right? So that what you're effectively doing by picking a max frequency is just setting what range of 102 for your value is going to end up at. So it's okay if you reach the absolute turbo frequency only one second every day, but as long as that number is in like 100 gigahertz versus one gigahertz, you're not losing much by setting that as the max frequency. The, the, basically, all you're doing is losing a little bit of resolution by setting the max turbo frequency. That's all you're like losing. You're and, not really losing anything. And even if your task never reach one key utility average, which would mean always running at max turbo max, you can, you can, I mean, uh, how it's used in schedule typically, if you have nine and red, I mean that. say it may or may not. Yeah, but no, I mean that the goal with the, the belt and the frequency invariance and the architecture invariance input is that you want a uniform classification of the compute capacity of the CPU. What is the max compute capacity you can achieve on your system without taking into account thermal, without taking into account some frequency um, slowing down and so on. That's the max you can reach. And everything is scaled by that, which means that wherever your task is, is utilization will be the same. Doesn't mean, uh, which means that if you are running at the max capacity of your E core, the utilization will be never above 500, for example, if you are doing some idle things. But that's, that's okay, because 500 is the max compute capacity that your E core can reach. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now you you basically are saying this as long as I have SMP. Uh, okay, wait a minute. No, Let yeah, me finish. And, as long as we yeah. have SMP, we are fine. Uh, if we even if we have uh, we overestimated the max free, because in that case, um, uh, because in that case we we we, we may not reach 100% uh, um, of utilization, but then every task will be relatively smaller. So yeah. we, we don't care, right? But if we have a hybrid then, and then, and th then there are different, you know, different turbo levels and they, yeah. you know, in one case, they are reached more often than in the other yeah, but, case, but, then we have a problem. But that's why we have this micro arch input, which will be different for your e -core and your P-core. Because of, obviously your e -core will never provide even at your book uh, frequency, uh, the same amount of capacity than your P core. Um, so even at your max frequency, so with uh, for your e core, you will have your you are using the max frequency 100 of the compute capacity, but the arch CPU scale will say this CPU at max is only half of the P core. So that means 500 of the system. I think that's what is missing for you for bit on, on your right. Degree. We've got an IPC difference. Even if we, even if they could reach the same frequency, yeah, uh, the P uh, core is thirty percent faster. That's the purpose of this R scale freq, R CPU freq, to say that you don't have the same microarchitecture. So even at the same frequency, you will not have the same IPC. That's exactly what you do in your test tool when you calibrate. And both of these are mainly to avoid clipping, right? Like if you set. The whole point of the upper limit you're setting is just to make sure you don't uh, clip the position. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, let's let Giovanni talk. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to recall um, and, and say my uh, point of view of why this uh, uh, static value was choos chosen. I see that uh, in the audience there is uh, uh, somehow the belief that uh, we could just uh, set the maximum turbo level for the um, 
for of the CPU was the max frac, and there wouldn't be much loss. So uh, I'm first first I'm happy to learn about this uh, micro art uh, 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 part where we could give different uh, frac max for the different kind of cores. So that's definitely the route to go for uh, for Alder Lake. But the presentation by Rui, I believe, it's not based. I mean, it, it, it describes uh, Alder Lake as a possible challenge, but even on the current status, Rui is not happy. And um, the reason this was uh, um, just a uh, constant and not the maximum turbo level is, as we all know, the um, uh, opportunistic Intel optimizations are so that uh, there is not enough uh, power to have all cores reach the maximum turbo, obviously. And uh, so if you set your max frequency uh, to the maximum turbo, you would uh, have uh, some cores that always appear severely underutilized. Uh, because that is uh, that value is used to compute the share of utilization, and um, the turbo on 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 x86 uh, server uh, uh, CPUs sometimes is double the maximum non-turbo p state, so it's a large margin. And um, uh, I mean, you have Len Brown in the audience. Uh, the there is uh, the there was no simple way to uh, understand what is the actual capacity at this time of the CPU. Some, someone here says, just give it uh, maximum turbo. But uh, the, in my experiments, in my exper uh, exper uh, experiments uh, we were severely underestimating the uh, capacity of some cores and uh, because the difference between max non-turbo and max turbo is very large and turbo is uh, not available for all cores. So this was the, um, the, the reason of that, of that constant, static constant. Thank you. Um, there are a few points I want to kind of clarify to make sure we're on the same page. The architecture capacity is nothing to do with the max frequency each of the CPUs could reach. It's trying to say for a given exactly same frequency, what would be the performance difference between your performance versus your efficiency core? So at one gigahertz, if your efficiency core would be half as performant as your big performance core, then the value needs to be 512. And for the big core, you or your performance core would be 1024. That's what it's trying to do. It's completely independent of what frequencies each of the CPUs can reach. And um, the other part is you have for a frequency range, it goes from 0 to 1024. So you're effectively saying you have the resolution of 0.5 percentage. Like, as long as you don't have 1,000 frequencies, you're not going to lose much because, yeah, I think you get the point, right? We are saying from 0 to 1024 is the number of levels we can kind of accurately model. And as long as you don't have that many frequencies, I think you're OK. You, what you just what you're seeing is that the turbo can be twice the max at four cores. Is that the point? That can be that we can have that huge difference. In which case, I can understand from a load from a load balancer point of view. In order to define the CPU as overloaded, the utilization should be above. The, I think it's 75 or 85 percent of the max capacity. But now I agree that if your turbo is twice more than the usual max frequency, you will never reach or hardly reach this 85%. You will never be set as overloaded and you will never trigger the overloaded load balancing. Yeah. So in your case, if there is such difference between the turbo max and the four core max, I agree that the assumption that 80% of the utilization means overloaded. It's no more true for you because the, the overloaded case is much lower. That's probably one of your problems for the load balancer part of view. Yeah, Sorry? We, we have Aren't five we? times no. all some cases. So your guaranteed versus uh, max can be up to five times. And also we can change, you know, guaranteed can change so fast that it's, it's it, that it, that's why we, what we is saying is, 
the as you are saying that there can be huge difference in calculation okay yeah i, I think we need information about what you, x. what you can actually achieve at a, at a given point in time and that's where you mentioned thermal pressure earlier so ideally yeah. if you can't achieve your thermal frequency but achieve something less you need to know somehow that it's unachievable get there so you consider the cpu exactly over your size already at a lower point that the possible yeah of course if if your max frequency is changing wildly all over the place all the time it might be difficult yeah. to track uh when, so when, actually, when actually the, 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 so we are we, we have made a problem essentially yeah. because the, the problem is that we need to guess a value uh, so that we can overcome the issue about uh, a perf over ampere being being greater than one in some cases, because if we could, if that value could be greater than one, then we don't have then we don't need the max. We just pass the value and be done. Yeah, but you still do not do not know when your CPU is actually fully utilized or not. Is it fully utilized? Do you have not have any spare cycles because your hardware can't go any faster? Uh, or I agree. Because it but, doesn't increase. Yeah, 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 yeah. I you agree. You need that information. But yeah, okay. So we 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 run out of time for this uh, twice already. <laughs> okay, quick, so. quick comment. So <laughs> Linux does know when we are fully utilized because there's no idle time. We know when there's no idle time by definition. Yeah, that, that that's a good criteria. We do yeah. know that. Or, so can we always assume that Intel hardware will run as fast as it can? It will never ever. Get to a situation where there is no idle time where it could actually run faster. Is it uh, well, Len, but no, no, no. This is uh, but let, let's just you know go offline with this because we can continue for the next hour here and uh, and we have other topics. So, what, what just that? one. One one minute comment. Okay. Just sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. One minute. Last uh, one. Okay, yeah. So if I ha if I give you an interrupt every th every like few hundred few hundred microseconds and update the thermal pressure, is that uh, how, what will be the impact of it? I know I, I can compute and I can send you that your your reduce every five hundred twenty fifty microseconds. Is that okay <laughs> to have for scheduler? Uh, so the, so you mean in in the interrupt context that even yeah. not. I can into yeah. continue your clock task. So it's not visible from a task point of view. Yeah. That's another uh, compute capacity scale. We have two compute capacity scale. Uh, what is stolen by interruption and then what re in what remain, how you split that uh, between the task. Okay, I see. That's even more complex with the, we have another dimension with the IRQ. Otherwise, that's, that would have been yeah, that's a, yeah, that's what the we can we know we have we get IRQ on lots of cases when we limit something, but we don't yeah. take it because of a lot of other things yeah, too much. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Rafael. Yeah. No problem. All right. So we have a. We'll have a small, small break still. So the, to, to comment on, on the utilization uh, until we are waiting for the mic. So the frequency scaling is about making things 100% utilized all, all, all the time because it adjusts frequency so that it is, so that, that there is no idle time. So because, This is the whole point right now. So that we, we cannot really say that this is the that, that we are um that we, we cannot use this as a criteria for uh, for saying that we are run as fast as possible. Okay.